So let's show you how to do steak on a cast iron skillet. It's a different way of cooking it. It is a fantastic way of cooking it. The flavors, the crispness that you'll get with this can't be beat. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing out of the gate that you're going to want to do is get this out of the fridge or wherever it's being kept cool, get it down to room temperature. Patting that exterior down, drying it out, gives you much better frying or grilling that crispy exterior. If it's wet, you end up more steaming than frying the exterior. Next, you want to do a dry brining, which is simply coating the exterior in a layer of salt, maybe just a little bit more than what you would normally put when you're sitting at the table. That will intensify the beefy flavor, draw some of that moisture out, some of that salt will equalize into the interior. It just enhances the flavor of that piece of meat. Some recipes get really uptight about the amount of time you do this dry brine. Just know we do a little cheating in this version because it's a work night. You just pat it down with some paper towels do it once and then we'll do it again before it goes on the grill. That's good enough for this dry brining. This is such an easy dish to cook. You can come straight home from work. Your ride home from work can be the time where you're getting that steak to achieve room temperature, ready to throw the salt on and go straight into cook when you get home. This is an easy entree to put together. While that steak is warming up and the dry brine is taking its effect, you need to go ahead and get all the rest of the ingredients together. You definitely don't want to be running back inside to grab something because the cook is so fast on this that it'll get away from your heartbeat and you'll miss your temperature point. Again, it's not a complicated recipe. You're talking salt, pepper, garlic, olive oil, butter, and either rosemary or thyme depending on what your taste and possibly both, but my family likes just rosemary flavor. This whole setup makes a great Christmas or birthday gift present idea. You've got a young fledgling cook that's just learning, getting started out. Give this to them and they'll learn the blessings of cast iron. I usually don't get wrapped around the axle about spices, but I can tell you while you're in the store picking that meat up, pick up some fresh rosemary, some fresh thyme. It makes a difference in the cooking. We'll go ahead and get everything put together into one dish so that right at the right moment, as that cook is finishing up, we can throw that all into the skillet at once. Just to let you know how important that getting the dry exterior is, we'll go ahead and pat that down one more time. That salt has pulled some of the moisture out of that steak. So let's get rid of that before we head out to the hot, hot, hot skillet. So you can do this cook indoors on your stove top, but be ready to set off that smoke alarm. That'll just tell everyone in the house that dinner's getting made. I usually choose ribeye for this cook. It's a forgiving steak, plenty of marbling and fat, lots of flavor that comes along with that fat. If not, sometimes I use T-bone. If you live in an apartment where grilling and open flames aren't allowed out on the balcony, go ahead and get an induction cooktop. I'll put a link down below to the one that I prefer and the one that I use in my other videos. That's legal to use on those balconies. The first step is to get that skillet screaming hot. You want to get it somewhere around 450, 500 degrees. I like to throw the pepper on just before it goes into the skillet. Large cracked pepper kernels work well. Don't worry about it burning when it's on that skillet. It's not really on there long enough to give it that burnt flavor. Would you just look at that gorgeous marbling? Let's dribble in some olive oil to get that heat going. You definitely want that smoking hot. I'll put a chart up next where, where you hold your hand over top of the surface and it can kind of let you gauge what the temperature is on the surface that you're cooking on. Now you can probably see what I was talking about as far as setting off that smoke alarm. 
Look at that non-stick performance. I actually think a well-seasoned cast iron skillet performs better than those that are put on with chemical coatings. So if you look at this part of the steak, you'll start to see that heat line climbing up the edge of the steak. And that's what you're looking for to tell you when to flip. And we're only talking a minute or two on each side to get that golden brown fried exterior. So we're only a minute or two into this. And already, look at the gorgeous exterior of that steak. This is a really critical step. You do not want to go past the temperature that you'd like to see for medium or rare or medium rare, however you want it. Use a temperature gauge. We're also going to be doing a rest, so you're going to want to pull that meat off of the skillet, say five to seven degrees before it's achieving the temperature that you actually want. You also, you can see on the edges here, that fat that lines along there, you want to use that pan and go ahead and sear that fat and render it out some. So as soon as you start to see those juices coming in from the other side, like right over in here, that's your tell that you're starting to hit that temperature and be ready to take it off. I like to pull off at around 120 to 123 degrees and let it sit through the rest another five or six degrees. That little spot of blood is what I'm looking for. This is a critical part. In maybe another 30 or 40 seconds, it'll rip up those last few degrees real quick. Now it's time to throw in our aromatics. Don't be afraid to flip. We're about done here, so it's time to start baking. Check out how we use the corner of the pan here. The aromatics, that butter, that salt, that garlic, let it all flow into one side. That olive oil will keep things from burning. Let's baste that steak. As you probably know, it's real easy to burn butter, but that olive oil that you put in earlier is kind of like a stabilizer and keeps that butter from burning. We'll go ahead and let that rest for five minutes now and let that rest do its magic. Don't let those juices go to waste either. Pour that across what's sitting on the plate there. I bet your mouth is watering too at this point. As I sit here and edit this, I wish I had another plate of that. This is one of those meals when you're driving home and you say, oh, I don't know what to cook tonight. Mm, this is our go-to. So easy. My cameraman's been begging. piece of garlic too. <laughs> You've got to try this. Get yourself some cast iron and make this happen. So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. This is my latest upload and over here is a playlist you might just enjoy. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, 
and come on back for more.